I'd like to thank SAGES for the opportunity to present for SAGES Grand Rounds. I was asked to discuss the case for open appendectomy. We're talking about one of the oldest surgical diseases. It was first described by Reginald Fitz uh, over 100 years ago, and he advocated surgery, open appendectomy, in fact, as the treatment of choice. We can look at this study of almost 5,000 uh, appendectomies done at 147 hospitals, surveying a series of hospitals from the Department of Defense. Uh, very few of these cases were done laparoscopically. It's a series from 1997, so it's essentially a study of open cases. The overall complication rate is 5%, and there were only four deaths. For the cases that were pure acute appendicitis without perforation, there's a wound infection rate of 1% and change, UTI, urinary retention, bowel obstruction, and abscesses. For perforated appendicitis, the complication rate is, of course, somewhat higher with wound infection leading the pack at 6.4%, urinary tract infections, urinary retention, pneumonia, bowel obstruction, abscesses, colitis, PE, renal failure, MI, and DVT. But for both open and perforated appendicitis, you can see the complication rate is extremely low in an open series. Looking at laparoscopic versus open appendectomy, we have a study of 52 men from Portsmouth, Virginia, from the Naval Center there. It was a prospective randomized trial. The patients were selected, uh, were randomized in either the emergency room or the holding area, and they looked at operative times, hospital stay, days out of work, post-op pain scores, and operative costs. The reviewers were blinded by a large dressing on the patient's lower abdomen for the first days post-op. The results showed that the length of stay did not have a significant difference, whether it was done laparoscopically or open, that the operating time did not have a significant difference, that the time out of work did not have a significant difference, and there was, in fact, no significant difference in the result between a laparoscopic and an open approach. Was there anything bad? Well, there was. It cost an extra $600 for the laparoscopic cases as opposed to the open cases. And I would point out that this is a very well-controlled cost with prepared laparoscopic disposable packs. Uh, and they used endo loops instead of staplers. So it, I would venture to say that in another hospital, the, op the laparoscopic disposable cost would likely be higher. A lot of studies have showed some benefit in laparoscopic cases. And I'd like to propose that the comparison may not always be direct or always fair. Here we have a large database search using the University Health System Consortium clinical database profile. And Wynn et al. studied 41,000 open versus 19,000 laparoscopic appendectomies. In that study, uh, one of the outcomes was that it turned out that patients who were selected for laparoscopic surgery were more commonly female, were more frequently white, and significantly tended to have a lower severity of illness and were less likely to have perforated appendicitis. Uh, not surprisingly, the outcome showed a benefit for laparoscopic surgery with the patients going home earlier with fewer complications. The study was not controlled for those other differences. So uh, I think in looking at a lot of these studies, you have to look carefully for selection bias when the uh, laparoscopy is reported to show quicker recovery or better pain control. Similarly, in this study in children, 113 children underwent an appendectomy over 13 months in one hospital. 59 of them were open, 54 were laparoscopic. Uh, and again, there's a difference in the demographics of the groups. The ruptured appendixes occurred in 13 of the open group and only two of the laparoscopic group. And again, the uh, length of stay was shorter in the laparoscopic group, but I think to a great extent that can be accounted for by a higher severity of illness. Another study, 88 kids ages 1 to 16 were randomized uh, to laparoscopic versus open appendectomy. And this showed that the laparoscopic procedure had longer operating times and no difference in post-op pain, um, resumption of oral intake, uh, or return to their usual activities. So I think we can say that it has not been demonstrated that laparoscopic procedures uh, have a better outcome in terms of less pain or shorter hospital stay, shorter return to activities. So the next question is, are they more dangerous or are they safer? So here's a study looking at complications that was published in Surgical Endoscopy in 2001. 52 patients with a perforated appendicitis. 18 of them were done laparoscopically, 24 of them were done open, and 10 were begun laparoscopically and converted to open. And alarmingly, those patients who had a conversion, meaning that they were begun laparoscopically, uh, had the highest rate of complications of intra-abdominal abscess and post-op ileus. And here's a schematic of this. See the lap group, the blue column is abscesses, the red column is ileus, the lap group is small, the open group is also relatively small, 
but the group that started laparoscopically and converted to open had the highest uh, complication rate, which might suggest that starting laparoscopically puts your patients at somewhat more risk for these complications. Similarly, in a study of uh, 453 kids with appendicitis uh, that was published in the Archives of Surgery in 2001, 170 of them had perforations, and the relative risk ratio of post-op abscess in that group of laparoscopic versus open appendectomy was 5.6, meaning 24% of the laparoscopic group developed post-op abscesses, whereas only 4.2% of the open group. In summary, the reports of laparoscopic versus open appendectomy are mixed in the literature. Some reports favoring laparoscopy in terms of outcome may be biased by selection of lower disease severity in the laparoscopic group, um, uh, less illness uh, in the laparoscopic group, and variable reports of operating time versus OR time or operating time versus anesthesia time. Clearly, disposables are more expensive in the laparoscopic group, uh, and it's not clear that the uh, expenses are offset by a shortened length of stay. Uh, and in the worst case scenario, there's really no improvement in post-op course. Uh, converting from laparoscopic surgery to open surgery increases the complication rate over that of just starting with open surgery. Uh, there's a higher risk of intra-abdominal abscess and new complications related to the laparoscopic approach such as vascular injuries may be introduced. The appendectomy is a classic operation, it's been done for over 100 years. I propose that the open procedure is still the gold standard and we have not yet demonstrated that laparoscopy offers any improvement over that.